All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, in this video, I'm going to try to make it easy for you to see that a day is not a year. A year is not a week. A week is not a month. A thousand years is not a... And those people that teach this stuff are absolutely confused and delusional, and they deserve it. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to try to make it real simple, but let me give you an example. All right, because the way I like to do it is I like to show the spirit of error and then the spirit of truth. So let's listen just for a little bit. Hold on a second, y'all. I apologize. It's okay. Okay. A time, all agree, signifies a year. This is all the, you know, biblical scholars yeah, there you go. What are you talking about? A time equals year. That's what men say. Understand that. that. That's what men say. That's not what God says. Why would you trust men over God? Oh, they're scholars. Oh, I see. I see. They went to college when they were a 19-year-old pot smoking snot nosed kid they got into this stuff because they figured it was an easy gig they can make easy money and have power over people those are your scholars those are your experts those are your theologians and you're going to trust those guys over god are you kidding me that's that how is that any different than mormonism all these Mormons follow a 19-year-old pervert who has had multiple wives. They're trusting him rather than God. We've got the Word of God. We can hold the Word of God in our hands. You don't trust God? Seriously, what's the matter with people? She's not the only one, right? I, I want to be fair about this. It's like 99.9% .9 of all the preachers all around the world and probably all of them at, in your local community churches. They don't, uh, I don't know anything about eschatology. I just, I'm an expert on this and that. No, you mean just to want your money. And that's all I really care about. No, you know, then they, all they have to do is that they look it up and while well, this expert says this and this theologian says that and we got a scholar over here that teaches this none of them understand none of them i mean if you understood you wouldn't need to rely on experts or scholars or theologians or whatever if you understood yourself you wouldn't have to rely on other men you could just say hey look bada boom bada bing right here it is in the Bible and so now let's take a look at what the Bible says and I want you to I want you to understand this this is very simple stuff and, and of course it's just like for you just like it's like that for me is that this stuff is you wonder you don't know when you're learning you don't know you think it's rocket science but then once you do learn it's easy it's like oh wow that's so simple so let me make it simple for you Daniel and of course uh, what she's referring to, what she's talking about, is the 70 weeks of Daniel. And I find this very interesting because it's incredible how many people get this wrong. Number one, it, Daniel 9 is not talking about the Antichrist at all. At all. all right. People that are absolutely confused and people that aren't saved are going to look at that and think the, somehow the Antichrist is going to make an end of sins. All right. And also, number two, 70 AD has nothing to do with anything in the Bible. 
And I can strongly contend that the whole basis, the whole, I'm sorry, the whole basis of, of the 70 AD teaching is built upon the idea that Daniel 9 is talking about the Antichrist. If you take away that, you completely and utterly destroy 70 AD anything. Uh, and I challenge anybody. You don't. You, you can go to 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 the left and you can go to the right, but the very core of 70 AD is Daniel chapter nine, and this idea that it's talking about the Antichrist. Okay. But this is that sort of teaching is for people that are not saved. It's delusional. Okay? It's there for to satisfy those that don't believe. We that are born of God, we believe in the Word of God. And therefore we ought to understand it we really should. It the truth is knowable. Jesus himself says ye shall know the truth now let's get to know the truth all right so starting in daniel chapter 9 I, I would encourage you to to read uh, daniel chapter 9 you know read 9 in particular what we're if we want to focus exactly on this the daniel 9 and then daniel 12 and then of course daniel 9 is talking about uh, 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And we can find, uh, if we do this here, 70 years, we can find 70 years mentioned in Jeremiah 25 and Jeremiah 29. Okay. And it only takes five minutes. You can go five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. And then, you know, five minutes to collect your thoughts and, and to be able to see it. But... Um, that'll be on you, right? To to read this. What do I got here? But I would encourage you to read it just to clear your mind, have some clarity, to understand it. All right. So Jeremiah talks about the seventy years. All right. And then we get to Daniel uh, chapter nine, and we see. When we read the first few verses here, in the first year of Darius, the son of Azaharazaz, of the seed of Medes, Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years Whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. All right, so this is, it's a very interesting because uh, he's directly referring to the 70 years mentioned uh, in, specifically in, uh, in Jeremiah 29. All right, so... He prays, he fasts, he confesses. And I, I love this here. I encourage you all to read it for sure. Uh, o Lord, to us belongs confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee, to the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord, our God, to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us. By bringing upon us a great evil, for the under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we 
not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore has the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obey not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned at, as at this day, we have sinned, and we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to thy righteousness I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from the city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of for our sins and for our for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolations, and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousnesses, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And while I was at, okay, so here, let me, so while he's, you know, doing the prayers and, and all that sort of stuff and, 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 you know, pleading with God, um, then comes, uh, okay, so pay attention here. And while I was speaking, this is Daniel, right, and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yeah, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, all right, so you understand what I'm getting at here. This is, he's pleading with God, he's praying with God. And then here comes this man, Gabriel, whom I had not who whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I came to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. All right, so consider the vision. If if Gabriel's gonna, if he's telling Daniel to consider the vision, then ought you and me to consider the vision. Now, what's really important here is to know that 70 weeks is 70 weeks. There's no reason at all to believe this is 70 years. It says 70 weeks. Why, why would you think 70 years? Well, that's the devil trying to confuse you. All right? The God is right here. God is right in front of you. The Word of God is God. And God says 70 weeks. Now, if you don't believe God, you'll listen to the this other guy trying to whisper in your ear, saying, oh, it doesn't mean what it says. Yea, has God said 70 weeks? Oh. Huh? Doesn't that sound familiar? In Genesis chapter 3, the serpent said to Eve, Yea, has God said, 70 weeks? Oh, the serpent says 70 years. Oh, well, well I'll listen to the serpent. He sounds like a smart guy. Huh? Is that what you're going to do? Huh? It's, it's on you. 
The truth don't change. It's on you to, to find the, the truth, to seek the truth, to desire the truth, to want to know the truth. If you want to know, the truth will be shown to you. It's on you. This is not about, well, the majority opinion says this. It's not about that at all. The majority of the world's going to hell. If anything, you should you should take what the majority say and go the opposite route. You have a better chance that way. Seventy weeks are de determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision of prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Can you think of who that might be talking about? If you can figure out that, if you can figure out who this is referring to, you can figure out the whole thing. It's quite simple. I mean, it's so, so simple. It's foolish to think anything else. This is not rocket science. You don't need to be a 19-year-old snot-nosed pot-smoking brat pervert to know what this means. There ain't no, there is no secret prophecy. There is no secret interpretation of prophecy. None. What is, what's the verse I'm looking for here? No private interpretation. There is no... You don't have to be 19 years old, parents with a lot of money sending you off to seminary school to smoke pot and wipe your nose and chase girls to know what the Word of God says. It's not necessary. St. Peter chapter 1. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scriptures is any private interpretation. You don't need to go to private seminary school to know what God says. Come on. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth to the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem under the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. The street shall be built again of the wall and even in troublous times. Now, number one, okay, it's important to understand this is the Old Testament, right? Everything that is of any significance in the Old Testament is revealed and clarified in the New Testament. Okay? This is, clar this is easily clarified and brought to light and made easy to know in the New Testament. We can know beyond a shadow of a doubt this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that tore down the body, the temple, and built it back up. Even during the time Jesus was on the earth... The Jews didn't understand this. They, they know that you know they know the Bible inside and out, but they didn't understand that it was Jesus that was gonna tear down the body. All right, he tore down the body and built it up into a perfect body, a perfect temple. Know ye not, know ye not, that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? You don't know that? So when we read about the street being built again, the wall in troublous times, the sanctuary in the city, this is all in reference to the body of Jesus Christ. He destroyed the body and built it back up. Now, we, we see this a lot where we are given physical descriptions to um, give us a better understanding of spiritual things. And this is another really good example of that. All right. 
Now, the natural man will not see the things of the Spirit, right? And that's why uh, all these unsafe people are delusional. Because they're trying to um, understand these things in a natural sort of way. And it's not, this is not speaking of physical things, but spiritual things. And we know this because of the New Testament has revealed this to us made it clear and easy to, for us to understand this here when jesus does when this happens this is going to make an end of sins and makes reconciliation for iniquity and brings in everlasting righteousness that's what jesus did when he laid down his life that's the easiest way to figure this out because jesus did it he's the one that did all this and so this has to mean what he has done There's no way around it. You, you think about what these guys are teaching. 70 AD, the, the, the temple was destroyed, the city was destroyed, and because that happened, because of the destruction that happened in 70 AD, that made an end of sins? No. That, that made reconciliation for iniquity? No. That brought, that brought in everlasting righteousness? No. Well, then if you got no, no, and no, then that means 70 AD has no significance whatsoever. None whatsoever. Again, it's there for the unsaved. It's, it's, they're confused, and so that's the, the delusion they fall into. Now, if you're saved, why would you listen to unsaved people that have no understanding whatsoever? Why not trust the Word of God? I don't know. I don't know why. Unless you're not saved yourself, I don't see any reason why not trust the Bible that you hold in your hands. Okay, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. See, he didn't die for himself. He died for the sins of the whole world. He died for everybody. Not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. And the people of Prince, well, that's, that's the Jews. That shall come destroy the city and the sanctuary. They killed the Lord Jesus, didn't they? Who both killed the Lord Jesus. And their own prophets. And have persecuted us. And they please not God. And are contrary to all men. It was the people of the prince, the Jews. They had, they forced the Romans' hand to kill the Lord Jesus. But the fact of the matter is Jesus laid down his life for us. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. All right. I equate this to the parable of the wheat and the tares, where we are raised up together with the unsaved. So we got the unsaved and the saved living together, and then at the end of the war is the, the end of the world. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. All right, so Jesus... Brought in a new covenant, a better covenant based on better promises. All right. Hebrews 8, verse 6. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. And he shall confirm the covenant with, with many for one week. This is all revealed in the New Testament. This is not standalone secret stuff that everybody forgot about in the New Testament. This is revealed and made easy to know in the New Testament. Well, you thought this was the Antichrist? Well, that, that's what the serpents, I mean, that's what Reverend Smitty said. 
why would you listen to Reverend Smitty? Because when he was a nineteen year old pervert with snot running down his nose, smoking marijuana, he got he went his parents sent him to seminary school. And he learned all this stuff and, and you're gonna believe him? What do you know about the seminary school that he went to? And why would it matter? You've got access to the words of God. you got everything you could possibly ask for right there in your hands. Why would you need to depend on this 19-year-old kid who's now 49, 59, 69, whatever? Why would you need to depend on him to know what God says? You know, that's an old Catholic tr uh, trick. They, they've been pulling that trick for years. You know, back in the day, they would force people not to have their own Bible. If you want to know what God said, you had to go to their church. And now they're doing, they're pulling the same trick. Well, you can't know what God says. You have to come to Reverend Schmitty to know what God says. And you're, you're falling for it. Well, it, you deserve it. You deserve to be delusional. You do. Because you're not trusting God. Right? I mean, it's right there, right in front of your face. There, you don't need to know foreign languages. The only thing you need is faith. Believe. These are the words of God. Because they are. And it's going to play out. that Just as it says right there in front of your eyes, it's going to play out that way. And on that day when Jesus comes, you're gonna you're gonna kind of feel silly if you <laughs> if you're lucky, all right. If you're saved, and if you're not saved, you're in trouble, buddy. Big trouble. Because you had every opportunity. It was right there in within your grasp. You had your hands on it, man. You just didn't believe that you had the words of God. You didn't believe. God, there's no excuse, man, no excuse. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate. This is what Jesus did. I don't know what's the matter with people. He's the one that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. He did it. When he laid down his life. This is what the whole vision is about. Consider the vision. The 70 weeks are determined upon, determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. That's what this is about. And we get here to verse 27. What, what do you got, ADD or whatever that's called? You can't think for two seconds, three seconds, one, two, three, four seconds. You can't keep a thought for four seconds, for four verses. One, two, three, four verses. You can't remember what was said up here in 24. By the time you get to 27, you forgot about it. What's going on with people? Seriously. This hasn't changed. There's nothing there that says, well, now we're going to read about the Antichrist. There's nothing there. Nothing there at all. The Messiah, that's still the Lord Jesus. Here, this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, the Messiah, that's still Jesus. That doesn't change in 25. All right, in 26, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah, that's talking about Jesus. That doesn't change. Okay, that's there's nothing here indicating any, any sort of change with who the Messiah is and what the vision is about. And so... When we get to verse 27, there's no reason why this word he is going to mean something other than the Messiah, Jesus Christ. There's nothing there. I know Reverend Smitty and the serpent and, and all the godless unbelievers, the Bible deniers, the theologians, the experts, the scholars, they all say, well, this is talking about the Antichrist. Somehow there was a change. But it's not in, it's not there in my Bible. I ain't seeing this change from Messiah to Antichrist. It's not there. So when it says he shall confirm the covenant, that's got to be talking about Jesus. 
There is no other possibility. If you're going exclusively by the Word of God, okay? He has to be the Messiah. The Messiah has to be the Lord Jesus. Nobody else. No other possibility. So it's Jesus that causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease. He did that by offering his body. He did it. He did the works necessary for eternal life. Okay? He did the works necessary for salvation. And we are 100% at the mercy of God. 100%. And it's interesting. If I scroll up just a little bit here. Right? For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousnesses, but for thy great mercy. See, we are 100% at the mercy of God. Daniel got it. He understood it. Our righteousnesses, nothing. We are 100% at the mercy of God. Daniel understood it. Right? And so, Jesus gave us a new covenant, better covenant based on better promises. And then even, it says here, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. All right? I forget what this is going to say. Uh, sec, yeah, okay. Yeah, make, they, they wouldn't. So the consummation is talking about us joining with the Lord Jesus Christ in the air when he comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, it's essentially um, the bride and the groom coming together. It's the consummation when, it's, when we are married and become one with God, when we are changed, transformed into our glorified body. Okay, so... This is that's what this is talking about. It's not rocket science, and I wonder if these guys even understand this part of it. They're so busy talking about Nero and 70 A.D. and all this fantasy land comic book stuff that has nothing to do with anything. I think they're missing how simple this is. Jesus laid down his life offered his body as the sacrifice and this is all clarified and simplified in the new testament and made very plain and easy to know in the new testament and how in the world do you read this and come up with all this 70 a.d nonsense is beyond me well 70 weeks don't mean 70 weeks it was 70 days i mean i was gonna go over all that stuff with you But is it really necessary to go over all the things that are not true? Okay, even until the consummation that and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate is the unsaved. Okay, so this is the separation from the wheat and the tares, the saved and the unsaved, right? The sheep from the goat. This is when we are taken out of this world, transformed into our glorified body, and the unsaved are destroyed. This goes all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 15, when the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and not shall bruise his heel. God is going to destroy all evil forever. All the unsaved are going to be destroyed, die the second death, and done away with forever. And we that are gods have everlasting life. That's what we're putting our hope into is this world without sin, without death, without sorrow, without pain. All right, so this idea, I was going to get into this because this lady, this, she just says to hell with what God says, and she's reading all these notes on what these experts say. And the experts say, well, 70 days... Equal 70 years and 70 weeks and 70 months and blah, 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 blah. Until your head spins so many times, it falls off. And you don't have a head anymore. Okay? So, real quickly, if I could. Let me see where I'm at here. Alright, so if you did a, a word search for day and year, you get 144 mentions. 
right? But there are zero mentions uh, that suggest all prophecy is, uh, you know, in the days of Adam, after he, he had begotten Seth, were 800 years. So you go 800 times 356, he lived a million years. No, that's not what that means. All right, so each time, so let me go through this here, if I can remember. I kept the pages pulled up just so that it make it easier for me to remember. All right, so Numbers, uh, third, what are we at? Numbers 14. I'm thinking here in 34. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. All right, so in the context of this, all right, the, the what does it say here? Each day for a year. So, this is, do I, do I want to use the word punishment? This is the punishment that they have to suffer, if you will. And this is specific to this group of people. All right, and this was done. In no way whatsoever is this inferring that every single time a day is mentioned, each day for a year, that there's, if you read this, you're going to see, if Numbers 14, read the whole chapter, takes five minutes. All right, it takes me about ten minutes because I'm really slow. And I'm not very smart, and so when I read, I read slow. Okay. But for normal people, five minutes. Take you five minutes, if that. And you'll see that this idea, that this is somehow implying that a day means a year throughout all the Bible prophecy, that it's, it's absurd. And you, these people are insane. And there's something seriously wrong with these people that use this example and apply it to every example throughout the whole Bible. It doesn't work, number one. And this is not what it's implying at all. Okay, this is specific to those people. And the this, this was done. And... You all right, buddy? And uh, so, I mean, the idea that I mean, it's driving me nuts, man. What are you talking about? How is this? How do you take this and apply it to every this? There's no sense in that. There's no no reason for it to take this and apply this to every Bible prophecy. None whatsoever. All right, so we can eliminate that. All right, we can eliminate that. What do I got here? All right, so we can eliminate that. All right, so we can eliminate her. Now I'm going to keep Daniel 12 up. I'm going to try to end it on that. And Ezekiel, uh, where are we at? Chapter 4. Give me a second to collect my thoughts here. I have appointed each day for a year. All right, when the now has... Okay, so this is the 390, is that right? What am I looking at here? Let me read this, for just so I can collect my thoughts here. For I laid upon thee the years of thy iniquity, according to the number of days, 390 days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel, and when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on the right side. Okay. Lie again on the right side. Uh, and lie again on the right side. Excuse me. Oh my 
goodness. I'm collecting. I'm thinking about three things here. Lie, lie thou upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon it. Thou shalt bear their iniquity, for I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity according to the number of the days 390 days so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel and when thou hast accomplished it lie again on the right side and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days and I have appointed thee each day for a year all right so this is specific all right this is not okay so now I've appointed all the Bible prophecy to mean a day means a year that's not Okay, that's not that's not what it's saying at all. It's not implying that at all. It's talking specifically about. Oh, I want to say his name, but I want to confirm it here. Oh, I might be spending too much time on this. I want to say it. Oh goodness, I, I'm just gonna leave that alone. Okay. Anyways, the point is, all right, so I'm sorry about that. And the point is uh, that this is specific to in regards to um, laying down on the left side for so many days and then for the house of Israel and then laying on the other side um, number of days specific for the house of Judah okay this is nothing about it's not implying that okay so now every time you read Bible prophecy a, a day is gonna mean a year that's not what it's talking about at all all right and so real quickly let me go to second Peter chapter 3 and just let's say you can set your eyes on it and know and understand that this is not saying a day is a year, a year is a day, nothing like that at all. Knowing that, uh, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. This is with the Lord. This is not with you. It's not with me. It's not with man, it's with the Lord. And all this is referring to is, hey, God can see a large amount of time in a, as though it was a moment. He can hit the fast forward button and see it all. Or he can hit the slow mo button. He can, he can slow mo everything and see every single thing. Um, you know, he can magnify one moment in time as though this moment, this one second of time is hundreds and hundreds of years, okay? That's, I mean, God can see things a lot differently than we can, and this is all in the context is a reference to the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Now, we think, oh, the Lord's taking forever, but... With the Lord, he can see things condensed or expanded. And so it's not condensed. It's not, uh, he's not slack concerning his promise to return for us. Right? To us, it might seem like it's taken forever, but it's for the Lord, it's, he's, it's going to be quick. He's coming quick. And that's why we're warned. Because if we could see things as he sees them, we would know, hey, man, that was fast. In the context of eternal life, we are in a short time period right now. And when it, when it happens and it's over, it's over forever. And then in a million years from now, we're going to think, boy, boy, that happened so fast. It was so quick. I wish we could go back and... And warn people and say, hey, look, man, it's going to happen real quick. You're thinking, ah, you know, I've been around for 50, 60, 70 years. But, man, I'm telling you, you have no idea. It's gonna, the Lord's going to come fast, and when he comes, that's it. It's over. There's no more opportunity for the unsaved to get saved. 
a million years from now we'll be thinking man that was too fast right now men are thinking oh he's taking forever but then a time will come oh that happened too fast huh all right so anyways my point is that in, in second peter chapter three that in no way is this saying well in bible prophecy a day is a thousand years all right so here's where people get illogical right they don't want to say a, a day is a thousand years they want to say a day is a year so they want to say 70 weeks is 70 years well weeks is not a day number one all right <laughs> In 2 Peter chapter 3, it's not talking about a day is a year. It's talking about a day is a thousand years. So you want to apply your nonsense here, 70 weeks, plus well, 70,000 years. Oh, well, yeah, I don't want to do it that way. Or you could flip it around. So a thousand years, 70 weeks is not even close to 1,000 years, so it's not even a day. We're talking about, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? So this prophecy is about 15 minutes. I mean, there's no logic to what they teach whatsoever. The myths of the week. So, okay, so you t what you do is you you take the, the week. And in a week, you got 70. I'm sorry. In a week, you got seven days. All right. So you take seven days times 70 weeks. And somehow you come up to 490 years. And that number, that number don't mean anything anyway. It's just all a bunch of nonsense. So, let's see. What, it took the Lord 490 years to lay down his life? Is that what the New Testament says? It took the Lord 490 years to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting life? Is that what the New Testament reveals? Huh? So when Jesus laid down his life, causing the sacrifice and oblation to cease, that took 490 years? Oh, but it was in the midst of the week. So 490 divided by 2 is 245, so it took 245 years? Well, what are you saying, man? You're just playing with numbers. You're confusing yourself because you, yourself, are confused. What was that? I was reading. Oh, give me a second here. I got a thought. Oh, yeah, no, it's Daniel 9. I'm sorry. O Lord, righteousness belongs unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces. Well, the Lord clarified the vision of Jeremiah, made it easy to know. And, and of course, in the New Testament, it's all revealed and made plain. But this confusion is still on the faces of those that do not believe those that need mercy and forgiveness those that are rebelling against God have confusion on their faces okay that's all I want to say there all right and then uh, Jeremiah 29 did I touch that already where was I at was I in Ezekiel just now here, let me do this. Close that out. Uh, we know uh, 70 years. Jeremiah, did I cover this already? And thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. Okay. So, um, in Daniel, uh, 
This I already went through. I already covered this, didn't I? Okay. I do believe. All right. Again, covered that. Covered that. And covered that. All right, and that's covered. All right, so let me finish on Daniel 12. All right. And, uh, oh, yeah, the, Daniel 12, specifically, uh, I mean, where do I start here? Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, and none of the wicked understand, do they? But the wise shall understand. We that are born of God are the wise has nothing to do with going to seminary school as a 19-year-old pervert, snot-nosed brat kid. Nothing at all. Has everything to do with being born of the Spirit of God and believing in God. Everything. All right, and I got to I got to cuz I love this verse so much, I got to share it with you again. Let me do it this way maybe I can do it without revealing okay in Psalm 19 verse 7 the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple the simple in this con in this uh, reference here this this verse the simple is uh you, basically dummies like me I mean I'm as dumb as they get and I've done one day one dumb thing after another throughout all my life and so when it comes to dummies it's that's me and if God can make a dummy like me wise he can make anybody wise guaranteed and that's what the testimony of the Lord the law of the Lord does for those that believe, those that are born of the Spirit of God, those that have faith in God, God will make you wise, no matter how big of a dummy you are. I testify to that. I guarantee that. All right? And God will, will reveal it to you, okay? God will reveal His truth to you, guaranteed, if you believe it's all about faith man it, it's always been about faith it, in the understanding the word of god is 100 percent about faith has absolutely nothing to do with seminary school bible college experts and scholars and liars and false prophets they're all liars you know that right and that's why Jesus warned us over and over and over again. And the very first thing he warns us of in the, in, at the end of the world, as we approach the end of the world, is take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Daniel 7, did we not prophesy, teach? Did we not teach in the Word of God? Did we not have all these seminary schools and Bible colleges in the name of Jesus? Again, many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. We're warned over and over and over again. And then, and then what now? You 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 take you see what you it, what what's going on in the real world. You read the word of God, and then you go outside and you see. Do you not see? All these people, they're all liars, deceivers. They all got in the business to make money. And now the world's full of them. It hasn't always been like this, man. You think about the way it is today. It's not. It wasn't that way 40, 50 years ago. There's no way. It's only in recent time that things have gotten much, much worse. Young people aren't going to be able to see it. I don't think. Because in the 70s and 80s it was different. I wasn't a believer back then. But I know it was different. I know it was different. And I know things have gotten worse in the 20 years that I've been saved. Right? 23 years, whatever. 
Things have changed, and they're changing fast. The deception is overwhelming. To a point to where now, <laughs> I don't know how anybody gets saved. It would, it only it take a it took a miracle for me to get saved for sure. But what chance do the young people have? They don't even know how almost how impossible it is for them to get saved. And not only that, we're so close to the end. What can we do? What can we do to help them? The deception is so great. I don't know if there's anything we can do. The time is so short. You know, what can we do? We can't change the world to help them see that what they really need is a change of heart. Right? A chain, you can't change the world. But you can have a change of of heart. All right, verse 11. From the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, you know in the Old Testament they would offer the blood of bulls and goats. All right, now that's done away with when Jesus offers his body. Of course, this is Daniel 12, the Old Testament. This is all revealed, made easy, plain, and simple to know in the New Testament. Right? From the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that makes desolate set up shall be 1,290 days. All right, so th this right here, desolate, this means not being born of God, right? not having the Spirit of God, not being saved. All right, being the terror, all right, being the goat, being the unsaved, being the wicked being the sinner, so on and so forth. The desolate means without. Without, here in the context, is without being born of God. All right, and then the 1290 is the time until the end of the world. All right, so we're going from the beginning, which is when Jesus laid down his life. All right, he's the one that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. We read about that in chapter 9. He's the one that makes an end of sins. He's the one that makes reconciliation for iniquity. He's the one that brings in everlasting righteousness. So he's the one that takes away the daily sacrifice. He, from that time, from that time, to the end of the world, which is 1290. All right, the end of the world happens at 1290 days. All right, blessed is he that waits and comes to the 1335. All right, now think about this. The end of the world comes at 1290. Then at 1335, that means you have everlasting life. That means you made it through the wrath of God. That means you made it through the end of the world. That means you're on the other side. That means you have eternal life. Blessed is he that makes it to that point, to 1335. That's what this is talking about. There's no other possibility. All right. Now, it's important here. Why would you, I mean, you can sell comic books and make fairy tales out of this 1290 and this 1335, but why? That's not the point. That's not the point of this at all. All right. That's not the point of this prophecy, and it has no relevance whatsoever to actual timelines in accordance to the end of the world. No man knows the day or the hour. All right, and so this 1290 is not 1290 years. All right, this 1335 is not 1335 years. It says days. There's no reason at all. None whatsoever. To imagine this means years, and it has no relevance whatsoever. It doesn't mean anything. It could just as well say seconds. 1,290 seconds 
and blessed is he that comes to 1335 seconds. That's not the point. The, the seconds, days, weeks, years, not the point at all. has no, no relevance to the prophecy that's being taught here, that's being shared with us. All right. The prophecy is about Jesus laying down his life. And then the end of the world, that is Judgment Day. And this is, this is prophesied all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, all throughout. This is, there's, oh, the, the evidence is overwhelming that this is what this is referring to, and that is the end of this world. And it's, it's essentially a warning that it's coming, and it is coming could be today and so we we that are born of God we need to you know get more serious about this get it right I and mean, what are we doing and if you're born of God why are you listening to other men why aren't you believing God you know I just wonder I wonder about I worry about people really People that they claim they love the Lord, but they don't believe the Bible they hold in their hands, that's a contradiction. That there's something wrong there. Very, very, very wrong. And there's not only, you know, a problem with that, but now if you're not saved, if you don't believe, if you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hand, how are you going to get some young fella? How, how are you going to teach him and show him that, hey, God is real? Well, you, don't, you yourself don't even believe the Word of God. How are you going to convince some young fella that the Word of God can be trusted when you don't even trust it yourself? See, this world's a mess, man. It's a big, big mess. It's worse than what people realize it really is and there's no doubt in my mind uh, the Lord Jesus could come at any moment and this is our opportunity to speak the truth all right maybe somebody out there maybe there's some young fellow out there that wants to know the truth well it's still here but it's hard to come by Apparently, I mean, it, to me, it seems so so simple. It's right there in the Bible. Like your King James Bible has the absolute pure truth, word of God from God. But there's so much crap in the world. So much the world's a cesspool, right? So much deception out there. It's hard for the young. It's hard for the young fellows. Okay, it's hard for the young people. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's so my point to, just to uh, recap that nothing in the Bible anywhere suggests a day is a year, a year is a day, uh, a week is a month, a month is a year, and blah 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 blah. blah. Hey, that's not in the Bible anywhere. People are just making stuff up. You can see this for yourself by examining the Bible, the Word of God. Examine what they say. You know, whether it's Ezekiel, you know, Daniel, um, Jeremiah, whatever. You know, Second Peter 3. Anywhere, whatever. Whatever it is that they're claiming, you can look at it for yourself and see that they're lying. They're lying every single time. And specifically, in regards to Daniel chapter 9. This is not rocket science. It's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He has done it. He has made an end of sins. Uh, the consummation is when he returns. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. The consummation is the church, the body of Christ, joining Christ, the Lord, and becoming one with God. It does not yet appear 
what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we will become. Oh, it does not. I, am, I don't know the words. I just butchered that, didn't I? That's terrible. Beloved, we now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Just as Moses led his people out of the wickedness of Egypt, so also will the Lord Jesus Christ deliver us out of the wickedness of this world. He will appear in the clouds of heaven, and we, will, we that are born of God, we that are saved, will be lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord.